Thanks to the RYA Dinghy Show being virtual this year, I've been able to interview some of my all-time international sailing heroes. And I'm delighted now to be able to introduce a very special guest indeed, none other than Sir Russell Coots, the most successful America's Cup sailor of all time. Russell, thank you very much for joining us all the way from New Zealand. It's, you probably just got out of bed, I imagine, uh, where you are. Uh, I have to say New Zealand looks absolutely fabulous. We're completely jealous watching all the images on the TV, uh, and I'm really grateful for you joining us today. Thanks, Ian. Great to be here. What I'd like to know to start with, Russell, is maybe you could just explain to the younger viewers, how did you get into sailing? How did that become your destiny? Well, my family was involved in sailing. Um, and uh, we, we were fortunate to, uh, I mean, my father was, used to build my boats at, at a young age and, and fortunate to be able to, um, you know, have the opportunity to, to, to go sailing at a, at a young age. And from there, uh, my passion grew. I, I was um, able to, you know, with my friends, able to sail whenever I wanted to as a junior. So we had a boat shed alongside the water. We were able to launch our boats um, I shouldn't say this, but sneak off from school. Um, <laughs> the teachers would often see a couple of white triangles d d down on the Otago Harbour as we were, you know, sailing um, sometimes early afternoon. So we had a great uh, time, and uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, we're fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to go sailing whenever we, we, we could. Yeah, amazing. Well, obviously, it uh, was the platform for amazing success to come. And uh, you're one of a very small group of people who've won both an Olympic gold medal and the America's Cup. Perhaps well, Ben Ainsley and Pete Burling maybe are two that I can think of, Blair Took. So I can think of four. Maybe you can think of some buddy more. Melges. Yeah, Buddy Melges, that's right. Um, so which one means more to you, the Olympic gold medal or holding, uh, holding the America's Cup above your head? Well, you know, I mean, as my sailing involved, I, I started off sailing single-handed boats. And, you know, so I had a lot, you know, a goal to go to the Olympics the first off and, and went to the Olympics and, and you know, had, had uh, success there. And uh, But as things evolved, I, I enjoyed sailing in team environments more and more and moved into, which fortunate New Zealand was challenging for the America's Cup and moved into the America's Cup and enjoyed that. So I guess uh, as time moved on, I enjoyed the team environment more and uh, you probably rate that as, 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 as the most fun times when you're, when you're with a, a great group of people, a, a great group of buddies that you get on well with and, and uh, you know, a, a racing, you know, in that competitive environment, but having a, a lot of fun along the way you can only achieve so much on your own you need to you need to have good people around you all the time we were very focused on team actually and even even i go back even uh, in my younger sailing um i always teamed up with friends to to, to go sailing um, and we used to share information a lot swap boats um change equipment um talk honestly about why we thought um, uh, you know certain things were working certain things work weren't and I think that was a great lesson you know uh, uh, if I was to say one thing to um, the approach of junior sailors today it would be really get away from um, the secrecy of, of, of oh, okay I, I might have this might have discovered this feature on my mast or my sail that's, that's, that's now going really well and giving me an advantage. Well, but it's, it's, there, are, there will, will be all sorts of information that uh, the others around you have. And if you can somehow figure out a way to pull that information and, and accelerate your learning curve, you, then, then you would, uh, you know, you, you, you'll greatly enhance your, your, your ability to race well later and, um, you know, and also have a lot more fun along the way. Yeah, I think that's great advice. And uh, it's music to my ears because one thing we're trying to do in England at the moment is really encourage people to sail locally, you know, really to buddy up with more people from their home club and just do lots of lots of hours on the water locally and help each other along, get those get those sort of training environments going a bit like, bit like you're saying. Yeah, well, 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 you know, a lot of it, I mean, if you just simply swap boats, so if you're out there sailing with your buddies and, and, and one of you is going better than the others, just don't change anything. Just just switch boats. 
and yeah. it allows the other sailors to see, you know, see what what the boat looks like, what the sail shapes look like, what the boat feels like. And straight away, you, 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 you'll sense some differences. And, and then you start to think about, well, why is that the case? Why is yeah. that sail shape better? Why does this boat feel better? Why is it? Why does the balance feel better in this boat than the other boat? And and once you start getting to the why, and you start figuring out the reasons why, then you then you're making real progress. Yeah, no, that's very interesting, and it, it it's an interesting insight to how your mind works as well, because you've been one of those people who've you've got that engineering background, and you've really tried to understand the why that sits behind it, not just not just what you have to do, but but why. So, thank you very much for that. And um, do you, to, mentioning America's Cup, tell me what what do you think of those? incredible boats out racing at the moment we're, we're you know as we do this we're just waiting for the prada cup final um what do you make of that do you wish you were helming one of those yeah well, that, 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 they're incredible aren't they the, 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 the performance i think is um it certainly has surprised me and you know i think surprised a lot of people um you know and and this is the first evolution of those boats you know so so yeah it's it's, it's, it's an incredible development yeah uh, it's staring so uh what do you think? So tell us, in the OS Team UK, are they going to win? Uh, you know, honestly, I think it's 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 it's. I think they'll have a. Um, they've you know, obviously got a chance. They've got some a great sailing team, which which I think um, you know obviously works in their favour. They're, they're sailing the boat really well. I honestly don't know whether they'll have, ultimately have the speed to win. Um, yeah. You know, the New Zealanders are. are, are from to, to my way of looking at it, are quite advanced versus you know some of the other teams, but you know as we've seen in the past, you never know, and and uh, you know also I think the reliability of the boat will, will, you know, could come into play, uh, as we saw with American Magic. Uh, you know it wouldn't be you know unthinkable to to uh, think that one of the boats could get damaged. Yeah, no, that's right. And strong winds and so forth. So you know, I think it's you know it's it's going to be an interesting series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's hope the uh, all the gold medals on board in Yost don't weigh them down as they uh, take on Prada <laughs> in the Prada Cup final. But of course, your your main uh, focus at the moment is of course the Cell GP, and we're really excited here in England that that the Cell GP uh, Grand Prix will be coming to Plymouth. I think it's in July. Correct me if I'm wrong. The second or third weekend in July. Um, hopefully, we'll be celebrating the fact that we're out of COVID by then. Uh, and I'd really encourage any of the youngsters at the dinghy show this weekend to nag your parents and uh, make them come down to Plymouth. I was there in cows for the Cell GP um, uh, the last time it was here. We um, we were. It must have been the worst weather weekend I can ever remember in summer. Probably second only to the America's Cup weekend, uh, which was also had similar weather. But still, we saw some incredible action. Uh, tell us a bit more about the Cell GP, Russell, and, and what people can expect if they come to see it in Plymouth. Well, I think, you know, there's, there's more teams and more competitive teams. So now we've got eight teams racing. Um, I think uh, the addition of the New Zealanders in, in, into that mix is going to you know, add a lot of uh, you know, competition. So. Um, the teams have been working very hard to, to, to get ready for season two and, and, and make sure that they're competitive. And also um, the intro introduction of the new wing sail. So we have a modular wing that uh, is, uh, goes to just under 30 meters for light winds and, and can, by taking sections out, can be down to 18 meters for strong winds. So hopefully, even if we do get a bad weather window in, in Plymouth, we'll, we'll still be able to race. and, and uh, you know, I think that'll be exciting. Of course, with the smaller winds and stronger winds, um, the boats are going to be incredibly fast. So it wouldn't surprise me to see 53, 54 knots of, of boat speed. Wow. Um, I think Plym Plymouth Sound will feel pretty small at 53 knots. You bet. Yeah. Yeah. And particularly with, uh, you know, seven other, other teams on the water, um, these teams are going to, you know, I, I think... Uh, There'll be pretty, plenty of adrenaline and uh, action on during those races. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. I think it's, it's, it's going to be an yeah, intriguing season. 
yeah. people can come and cheer on Ben and Giles and actually not Giles. I need him for the Olympics, Russell. You can't have Giles for a while. <laughs> we need him. We uh, need him in the Finn in Tokyo. But uh, certainly Ben uh, will be leading the British team in Plymouth. And the other thing I do remember from Cows with the Cell GP was the Inspire program. Uh, it might have been too windy for the Grand Prix boats, but uh, I do remember the little catamarans out and a lot of very happy kids. Uh, I also remember the impact that had on the local community in Bermuda. Maybe you can share some of that. Is there maybe there's some lessons we can take from uh, some of the work you've done with those programs? Well, this is obviously a key part of you know what we do and and I think why we exist. And we're really all about growing the sport and making the sport more, you know, doing our part to make it more accessible to a much wider group of of people and sort of grow that. Um, grow that interest, grow that fan base. That's what we're trying to do by making the sport more, well, let's say consumable and, and understandable at a, at, a, at a broad class level, but also um, more you know, connectable at a, at, a, at a junior level. And our ambition is to, to really expose this, the sport to a, to a much wider, wider group of um, uh, young kids and, and, and enable them to really experience it and, and then find pathways for, the, for them to actually um, join organisations to then um, uh, hopefully you know, continue with the sport and, and, and uh, enjoy it the way that we all have and, and, and have been fortunate enough to, to do through our youth. Yeah, that's brilliant. I, there'll be a lot of kids, I think, they'll be nagging their parents even more to go to Plymouth now. And uh, we've also chosen Plymouth for the RWA Youth National Championships in August. So Plymouth right. is where it's going to be at this summer, uh, right. once we can get this nasty uh, virus quashed down. Um, I'm conscious of taking a lot of your time here, Russell, but the, the other thing I really wanted to touch on is I know you've been quite involved with the Open Bit class, and I know you've sort of... Um, you very much used your, uh, you know, status in the sport to try and help grow participation in New Zealand. Can you tell us a little bit about that, or your beliefs about junior sailing and what's important and and how we should be going about it? Maybe we can learn something from that in the UK. Yeah, well, I think one of the reasons we chose the uh, open um, bit or it, the open skiff, as it's now called, is was that it's um, it's it's standard equipment. Um, it's you know relatively maintenance free, and it's also you know um, um, pretty easy for, for for kids to get involved with. And 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 if you know if they go to an event, they can charter a, a boat for a really low cost and 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 participate. And I don't really think it matters that much, you know, what boat you sail as a, as a junior, um, as long you know, the the focus I think should be on. You know, learning the sailing skills without necessarily um, you know, uh, making it um, uh, too expensive or, or too complex to, to, to get into. And so um, we developed a, a, a program where um, there's, the, the focus isn't all on uh, a, a quantity of racing. Um, so so we, we think it's very important to, to um, uh, have short events close to the shore, um, have time to engage with each other on shore as well. So not just spend you know five hours out, out on the water running five races or you know whatever some um, classes do, but give the sailors a chance to interact on shore as well, and also um, you know allow them to uh, you know. Um, and make friends, but also also you know allow sort of a fairly low cost, um, um, not too complex uh, way of way of operating and getting into the sport. And you know by by and large that's been that's been pretty successful. You know a lot of people, of course, um, uh, I think you know focus on on really you know uh, uh, quantity at, at a young age, and I th I think. Um, Focusing on the enjoyment, on having fun, on connecting with other sailors, um, building those friendships, and then you know moving through that youth uh, pathway to you know, evolve into if you if you do want to become a Olympic sailor and, and so forth, evolve into that. I think is you know is 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 worth. I think just um, making sure that you enjoy the that those early years more than 
more than worrying too much about your race results. So don't get despondent on, on if you're not uh, having great results at a young age. You know, that will come in time. I, I think the important thing is just to develop the passion. That's perfect. And in fact, you've taken my last question away from me because I was going to ask you what is the most important thing. We've, you've talked about collaboration, you've talked about swapping boats, and now you've talked about enjoying the journey, being inquisitive, continuous learning. And I think they're all super important. So um, thank you. Yeah. I'm sure there's going to be plenty of uh, sailors and parents hanging on every word when this, when this gets played back. Um, Russell, I, I'm, I've taken far too more time than I promised I would already. Uh, you've got a long day ahead of you. So, Russell, I think what I'd like to do now is just thank you very much for your advice and, and your, your inspirational words. It's been great to catch up, and uh, I wish you a really successful year. Thanks, Ian.